Why hello! And welcome back to my sketchbook. It is another day of May. Of course, that means it's Mermay. As we discussed in our last video, watch where, you know, I drew a nice lovely little mermaid. If you haven't seen that, then I'll have a little pop-up in the corner. Somewhere around here-ish for you to go check that out. Come with me as I design another mermaid. I'll base this one off of the prompt Murfairy. I was kind of thinking that... As we discussed in the last, last mermaid video, fairies are one of my favorite mythical creatures. I'm very excited about this prompt. I'm very excited. Now, I was kind of thinking about maybe basing it a little bit off of like a sea angel. The sea angels, they're these little slugs. They just kind of have like these little wings and they're transparent and they're really cool. Okay, and with that idea in mind, I would go in, into my sketchbook and start creating like a little bit of nail. And I sort of just have this mermaid, like, s lean slightly forward, her wings sort of, like, out a little bit, and her arms just down beside her. And, and like, her tails comes up and back and whoop, and she has, like, a face and profile type idea. And I honestly, it's not the most fluid pose ever, but I kind of really like it. I think we should get into sketching. I kind of like this. Alright, this is the paper I'm going to be using. This is the La Corella... This is the Hanson Heritage paper. It's a hot press paper. And after I pulled out my paper, I put it into the portrait position. And I just had to start sketching. I start by just sketching a little bit of face like I always do. So I kind of have my guideline sound for where everything kind of needs to be. And now I was really struggling with drawing a mermaid this day. I don't know what was with it, but I was really, really struggling. I drew her little torso, I drew her tail. I did this so many different times, and it's unreal how much of a stroll this is. Normally this isn't like too difficult for me, but today it was just not, it was just not working this day. I don't know what was going on, but it was just not going. But I finally kind of land on this sort of pose. This body, I think it's the one I land on. I added some little arms, I added a tail. And I decided to add like these little frilly bits off of her tail at a few points. Like there's three in total. And I added her little wings, which I based very much on the sea angel's wings. This is kind of the only thing that's very sea angel-like. Because yeah, I didn't want to like go too far into it being a sea angel. Which I think it might have been cool if I just went for it. But I did not do that. But that's okay. That's a different mermaid for a different day. <laughs> so I kind of go through who I just detailing her little arms, sketched them in. I spend quite a bit of time on this since, you know, this is kind of a very important part. But I don't spend as much time as I did on, like, the last Cast Mermaid. Because the sketching process, this one, is going to get really covered up because I'm going to use gouache later. So, I just add in, like, her other little frill. And I decided to give her, like, this little, like, um, uh, pearl sort of, like, sash type of thing that goes around her arms. You see, my whole thinking with this was that, like, she collected these pearls and made, like, herself a little sash with them. But I feel like I could have probably showed this in a better way. So, when I think of fairies, I can think, like, they collect things and make stuff. And that's kind of how I think of mermaids, too. Oh, they collect stuff from the sea and they make things. So, I think I might have been able to do this in a better way, but, you know, it's okay. It looks just fine. It's pretty cute. I go ahead, I add in her little ear, I add in her little hair. And for her hair, I went with like a short little pixie cut, messy sort of deal, kind of a bob. It's very cute. I like it. I had some little teeny tiny. Pull up my little paint palette brush. I have that. That's a towel, not a brush. Hi, Holbein gouache. I have yet to actually use these. And I'm very excited to use them. Okay, and I pulled out my Holbein gouache, which I have never used before like i said and i had been dying to use them since i got them at christmas and i just haven't had a chance to use them yet and i finally mermaid was my excuse to use them so i went in i decided to like outline the mermaid with my paint which it wasn't i mean it, it kind of worked out in the end but like it backfired a little bit but that's fine so you see, I kind of go in, I'm blending out like as much as the outline as I can. I'm using lots of water. I'm adding lots of dark colors around her, her, and I'm just sort of adding in the blue, 
blending it out using as much water as possible to give it sort of a watery feel. I'm essentially using them like I would use watercolors at this very point in time. So, I'm just going in and I'm adding in little bits. I'm making the outer space look really dark that's like between your arms with my little tiny brush so I get in there and without like disturbing the mermaid. After that dries, I decide that it's a little patchy looking so I'm going to go over it with a really another really wet layer of the gouache and sort of just try to blend it out. Which I thought should actually really work since they're here since they're water soluble. Then I should just be able to pick up the bottom layer, or sort of add in, add much more to it and make it more blendy and nice looking. And this time I decided, well it's gouache, it's opaque, I'm just gonna go over the mermaid and be fine. And we are left with this. And it actually looks pretty good. So for the mermaid, I decided I'm going to you know, do her skin with like this light sort of purple color. So I do a very, very wet transparent layer over her skin. And then I'm going to go in with a more opaque, sort of darker layer and add in the shadows where I think are necessary and like the blush points. Then I am making, making a very nice light lavender color and I'm going over her skin with that, except for this time it's opaque. So I'm going to go over that and I'm going to blend the crud out of those shadowy spots I placed earlier. And sort of just like go through, blend it out, add, make it a little lighter where it needs to be, a little darker where else it needs to be. And just work really hard at blending it. And then I get so the same thing. I kind of add shadows underneath her wings. I add like a little shadowy blob for where her um uh, her like spine should be to just make that a little more defined. Because I feel like when you look at pictures, that's kind of how that it, of you know people's backs is kind of how it is. The spine's a little more defined than you would think. So then I go back in. I add little touches here and there. I'm going in on her arm. I'm just going to. I moved to my it's like bigger brush to decide it was ridiculous. I was using the smallest brush ever. So I'm gonna go in just as coloring her entire arm on her back with this other base color. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to blend out all of these little purpley colors to make it just be beautiful, blended nicely. And I must say at this point in time, I was not having that much of an issue blending. I was just going for it. I was adding more colors, I was blending, it was looking great, it was doing exactly what I want to do and they're working so beautifully and I I really like them at this point for my first sort of like like a gouache experience because I've never used gouache before I've used acrylic gouache but that's kind of very different than just a regular gouache so oh, I've used never used gouache before and I was really happy with how it's done I had little blushies to her shoulder right here I sort of blended down a circular motion and it's super cute I go and I make the shadow under her neck a little more defined and then after that dried I add like a layer, another lighter layer over her chin to make it look like, you know, I put in the shadow first <laughs> and I didn't paint it in the way I did. So I did that and I, that also meant I kind of went over her face a little bit more again and more shadows, blush and everything. And throughout the, I like painting for a little while, I kind of thought her face might have been a little bit of a weird shape. But I finally decided that it was okay. Like, I, I adjusted a small little bit at the very end, and finally it's okay. But, like, throughout the paint, I was like, her face is a little weird looking. And I think that was just me. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but I adjusted a little bit at the end, and it finally looks a little, you know, looked a little better. So, I don't know. And as you see, her face kind of just magically appeared. That's because I kind of need the painting to be closer to me to do the face, and you can't really see it. Sorry. I'll try to do better next time, but that's kind of how that went. Now I'm finally coloring the little arm that's like kind of in the back. So I made sure there's like lots of shading there to like push it further in the back. And you can definitely tell the difference between it and like her back. So I don't want those two bits to blend in at all. So I just go through and I make it really, really a, quite a bit darker than the rest of her, uh, her uh, back. And that worked out perfectly. So now I'm going to go I went and like color in the first like little frill. And... Really, if it is, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have colored in that frill yet. Because I do paint over it later to do the one that's underneath it. So I should have done her body. That was perfectly fine to do first. Her face and her body. But I should have then moved on to her tail. Oh, and then more to my way up. Because that's how the layering sort of goes. But that's okay. We'll just... We'll get there when we get there. Once I finally decide that that's what I should have done. Where I didn't actually doing what I did. Oopsies. 
So I just go through that and, and I even made like a little green of like from the pink to the purple on her little frill and I actually quite like that. It adds a little more red and warmth to her and I damage her pop even more from the background which I quite like. So at this point I'm trying to avoid the little frill a whole lot when I add in that little base layer of the purple. Then I go in I add base layer to the tail as well. I start very pink and it's very uh, watered down layer and I move into purples the higher I go up. Oh whoa I moved this. When the crud did I actually do that? Wait. <laughs> And at some point, I apparently moved my <laughs> my uh, a watercolor block. I have no memory of when I did that. I even edited this video, and I didn't even notice the fact that I moved it. So I don't know what the crud was going on there. <laughs> I don't know what the crud happened. And at this point, I'm deciding I think I should work from the tail up. No, it's not yet. I think I decided that's later. But I'm working from the tail. So I tried to work the two pieces at once, while one dries, I do the other. So I'm going over, I'm adding the dark shadowy bit, then I'm going through and I'm adding in a little bit of the lighter, regular, normal tail color. And I'm just going to fill that in and blend out the darker color as I go. And at this point, I was really struggling with my blending. Like, I don't know what was going on here with me, but I was really struggling with it. I, it's just I did the layering a little differently. Because when I did the body, the blending was like so easy, it came so naturally, it was beautiful. But then down here, I really started struggling. I kind of get the groove back a little later, but then it was like, down there was just like, wow. I'm struggling hard here. This is what happens when you're not used to art supplies. The struggle is bloody real. And at the very tip of the tail, I decided to make it like this darker pink color. Then you uh, fade into the lighter pink and then fade into the purple, which I really like. It looks great. I like the blending. It looks good. Good. Yeah, and while the blending was struggle, it still ended up turning out good. Oh yeah, that was the point where I decided I should be doing this, this layer before the next one. So I decided to do this very, very end little frill. Well, while the other layer was still had nothing, so I could just sort of blob over it and do what I needed to do. So I go through, I did the base color, I add in, in my little bit of shading underneath the other part of the tail, and a little bit on the left side of her. So, oh, I just go through and I blend all of that crud out. And this is kind of when, I don't know what was happening with these frills. But this is, I'm still struggling hard. This is like when the tail was a struggle. But this was so much harder to do on the frills than it was on the tail. I swear. I was like, I don't know what's happening anymore. So I spent so long blending these out. I, I cut out a lot of footage of the blending because of how long it took me. And I didn't want to be like, well born so just watching it blend. So I mean, look at this. This is still a lot of footage of me blending trying to get it to be good. But I, I had to take a lot of it out. So I didn't want a 50 minute video of me blending. And here is where I added my little bit of pink at the tip of the little frilly bit. And I sort of blend it out a bit to make it all nice blend in. I'm going back over this little other layer of the tail. You know, the next frill layer, I guess. I added my pink first this time. And then I go for and make it a little thicker and I blend it out a bit. I did? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do. I blend it out just a bit. This takes me a long time to do, but I, I, I eventually get it to look good. Eventually. It took a long time to do, but eventually it gets there. Oh my god. So I take the pink, I blend it out. I really like adding the pink. It's kind of like blushing, but not. And I go underneath the other layer to frill. I tried very hard to avoid it, but then eventually the gouache sword just went on top of it. And then that's the camera went so I was like, it'll be fine, I'll just paint over it. So I just sort of, it's a little messy, but it's fine. I add in my shadow, blend that out of course. I add the shadow to the left side again, just to keep it very consistent with the other layers. And I blend that out. This, this, is, the, this is the layer that I had the most issues blending. I don't know if it was because like it was the biggest open space I had, but this was the layer where I had the most issues with it. So, I don't know, but it took me a very long time to get the look finally good. And this is the point where I realized the tail kind of changed dramatically and color got really darker compared to the rest of her. So then, I had to go over it again with a lighter color and blend it out again. <laughs> so. But it, it was worth it because it looks better with the rest of the painting. So it was worth it. But it was just it was sad having the paint hole for all the blending I did and then re-blend it. Oh my god. But 
Uh, there's the hen. It looks like that the a part that you know is actually the peer color. It looks closer to how she does. It's still a little darker, but that's due to all the shadows and blending of the pink. So I think it's fine. At least matches the rest of the other bits of the tail. Because before it was even darker than all the other bits of the tail, the other frill and everything. So then it was really just weird looking. <laughs> So I fist that, and I go putting over the top layer of frill one more time, putting the base layer, putting the pink and the shadows, blending it out. Beautiful. There we are. I really like this little top frill a lot. I don't know what it is, but I like it a whole lot. Then I'm going to go over the, the wings. I make like a little outline of a darker pink underneath. And I fill in the one spot that doesn't, you know, overlap with the light pink. Then I'm going to go over the front wing. And I kind of do this in a way where I do kind of a slightly more water down layer. So you can kind of see the one line of the wing and like the sketch underneath. So it makes her wings look a little transparent. Ooh, fancy. And I decided on making her kind of like a um, blonde. So I go in and I added a lot of purple to that first, first layer I did. So to make it a little darker, then I go over the entire hair of that. I add like the yellow straw out of the tube. And then I lighten up the yellow and add in some more like lighter bits to it. And I work at the hair for a very long time. And after that, I'm going down to the pearls and I'm making them all base layer of white. And after I get them all base layer of white, I move back up to the hair. I'm making their darker color, I think, and go over it. Nope, that was the ear. I was working on the ear. Never mind. <laughs> then I'm adding a little bit of a darker center to each pearl and blending it out with white to make it look very pearl like. And after I do that, I go over each pearl and add in lots of shinies. I go back up to the hair. This time, I actually am at the hair. And I add in more of the red to make her like a strawberry blonde to make it look less out of the blue. And finally, I add in some shinies. Well crowned. And when I was adjusting her eyebrow a little bit, I guess there's water on my brush and that shot down and like splattered black everywhere on her face. So I fixed that, added shinies, and signed my name thinking I was done. But then I decided I was drawing some little pixie dust sparkly blips onto her wings, which I actually really liked. This was a good decision. I like this. Okay, I like that. That looks better. Okay, okay, but we're done. I'm gonna stop touching it before I do anything weird. But I think this actually looks pretty good. I don't think I've really done anything with, like, actual true gouache. I think I've done acrylic gouache, but never actual just regular gouache. And I'm actually quite happy with this. I really like the two mermaids I did. I think it's kind of interesting. These little frills are kind of interesting. And I like her little... I like how her having all these little shiny bits that kind of makes me think fairies are collecting little shiny things and whatnot. So yeah, she looks good. I like her little tiny hair pixie cut. She looks great. I hope y'all have an amazing day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!